So I want to show you some examples. Here's one shift that has to happen. We have to move from segregation to integration. We have to move out of sectors and learn to work across the disciplines instead of within them. Why? Because health is related to agriculture, which is related to education, which is, and you can't separate them. They all belong together. And if we're gonna lift communities out of cycles of poverty and disease, our health has to include much more than just medicine and cure. A healthy community is make, made up of people with capacity to, uh, to prevent disease and to make choices that improve the quality of their life. So people who go into these villages to do community health have to be generalists rather than specialists. They have to work across the disciplines rather than within them. And one of the ways that we've helped our trainers do that around the world, and we're working in tens of thousands of villages, the way our trainers work is when the community uh, surfaces a problem, this is what we've got to work on. We have about 10,000 lesson plans from everything to how to, how to give a physical exam to a goat, um, to, to uh, agriculture, to every disease that you can encounter in the village, there are lesson plans. They can go to those. The lessons are framed in truth, World Health Organization standards when it comes to health issues. But they start by posing a problem and lead them to a discussion in which they create their own solutions. And every one of our lessons does that for them. So we can send a trainer in that doesn't know anything about agriculture, but they have a set of lessons, they can, they can work, uh, they can identify what is the problem that we're dealing with, they can pull out that lesson and, and they have something to start with. That's not the only way to operate, but in remote places, that's almost, that, that, sometimes that's your choice. That's all you've got, right? And so we need to learn to work across the disciplines rather than within them. I wanna take you to Papua New Guinea for a minute and I wanna show you why this is important. When, I, when we started working in Papua New Guinea, the district health officer in uh, Lufa district told me that they had been trying for 30 years to get people there to use latrines. I asked what percent of the population are using them. They said 3%. I said, why? He said, because traditional belief here says evil spirits inhabit human waste and they hide in dark corners. When you build a latrine, you're building a spirit house that nobody will go into. I came back a year later, after we introduced the gospel and brought community health evangelism to the community, and we found um, the, the same district health officer with glee in his eyes said, we have 100% compliance. When I heard there was 100% compliance, I knew that what happened was not a physical intervention. It was a worldview change. It was the understanding that they didn't have to fear the spirits that the principalities and powers had been disarmed. So sometimes on the door of the latrine, you would see Jesus is Lord. But nobody in all of my Bible college or seminary education ever told me that a latrine would be an indicator of spiritual growth. So you see what's happening? We're not discipling them out of their animism because we've separated the preaching of the gospel from our interventions. And at the same time, we're leaving them without answers to the very problems they need to solve in order to become healthy people. They need to understand that God has made them in his image and he has given them resources and knowledge and capacity and they can use that to solve their own problems and they are not, uh, they are not victims of, of the spirit world. The gospel frees us.